Happy Friday. How are you? I feel so quiet. I don't know why. <laughs> why do I feel like this is so awkward? <laughs> I don't know why. Maybe because it's been a little, a little bit since I streamed today. I don't know. I've been having kind of a quiet day for the most part. Um, I kept offline for most of it. And, um... <clears throat> Yeah, I realize it's Friday. I want to see what my bitches are up to. Not that you're bitches. I love you. You're not a bitch. I'm so sorry. You're not a bitch. You're not a bitch. But it's Friday. My makeup is done. I was going to wear a wig. I don't know. Should I put my pink wig on? What do you think? I actually feel like I like my hair being super dark, actually, for the first time. Changing all my... Somebody is... I was about to say, somebody is being super obnoxious with the music outside. They're not, they're not serious. They're actually not serious. What the fuck are they doing? I don't know where it's coming from, but if I knew where it was coming from, I would kill the son of a bitch and tell him to shut the fuck up. I have to be behind. I don't know. Weird. It seems like it's right in front of my face, though. Oh my god, they're literally parked right behind my house and they're so obnoxious with their fucking music. Like, I literally hear their music as if they were in the same room. I literally want to go out there with a the chancleta. It is so fucking loud. Am I really going to be that neighbor right now? Can I even focus on anything else? It's just that this is all I hear. It's so obnoxious. Where is that coming from? Alright, we're going to just... We... I don't know, I don't know how to not pay attention to it. Is that sad? It's so rude. Just blast your fucking music out loud. What is your problem, my guy? Jesus. Okay. I digress. Wow. That was a bad vibe. That was a bad vibe on my part. Real bad vibe. But I don't like when people do things like that. And they just assume that they can be dicks. And that nobody is gonna, like, yell at them or, like, be like, hey, you're being an asshole. Anyway. So, I've got a lovely video. 
ready for us to walk. Hi, Jay Pixel. How are you, honey? Let me just close some of these up here. Ooh, it's a little bit tiny. A little bit tiny. Yes, I have a feeling the obnoxious person is leaving. I've seen this video before, but this is one of my favorite videos of all time of a celebrity setting boundaries. Russell Brand is an actor. He's an artist. He does a lot of different things. He is a man that takes no bullshit. Russell Brand believes that he's the main character and he makes himself the main character. I want to show you guys how Russell absolutely runs this table and shuts down every single person. <laughs> All right, joining us now, he's a really big deal. He's a big deal. I know. Yeah. I'm told this. I'm not very pop culture. I'm sorry. We're about to start right Canadian here. Canadian movie star, author, and host of the show. Look at Russell! Look at Russell! Look at him! Chat, this is not the look of somebody that is happy. Do you guys know why Russell is not happy? This all happened very, very fast. Very, very fast. So Russell has arrived <laughs> at a TV interview, okay? We you know to look at somebody do, like that? Uh, TV interviews like this. It's a press tour. He's promoting something. <laughs> His publicist has booked up 10 different, you know, talk shows for him to go on to basically promote the release of his thing. Russell didn't want to go on Morning Joe. His publicist made him, right? The least that the anchors of Morning Joe can do is know what he does for work and welcome him onto the show. But look at how this woman introduces him. She basically introduces him by saying, I don't know what he is. Uh, I think he does this, this, and this. All right, joining us now, he's a really big deal. He's a big deal. I know. Yeah. I'm told this. I'm not very pop culture. I'm sorry. Comedian, movie star, author, and host of the show Brand X. Look at like... Brand. This summer, he's embarking on his first ever worldwide comedy tour, The Messiah Complex. Caddy Kane. It is so incredible. Wait, oh my God, look at this. Comedy tour, the Messiah Complex. Caddy Kay and Brian Shackman are here as well, and he already told Brian that he might want to disrobe. It is so incredibly disrespectful to have a major movie star on your show and not know what the fuck they do. Okay? Like, that is so incredibly disrespectful to Russell. And I'm going to make a big assumption here, but this is just my opinion of things. These three anchors here on Morning Joe. These are the main anchors. They're always on the show day in and day out, right? This is their show. Well, now here's this guy coming in and he's a bigger celebrity than them. And for some reason, this lady just maybe wants to knock him down a peg for herself, but doesn't realize how rude she's being. But Russell picks up on this right away. So let's see what Russell does to combat that. Well, I just thought maybe I could loosen up a little, show a little more chest hair, and he no, said maybe I should I do a little more. No, I only think Russell can do that. You look fantastic. Yeah. That is a very kind compliment. You also look beautiful. Brian, you are free you to go? wear whatever you want. This is uh, one of your freedoms that is afforded to you. I appreciate <laughs> that. <laughs> so what I think Russell does here is really, really, really fucking awesome. He's clearly annoyed at the beginning of this clip. I hope that you guys can understand why that would come off as very, very rude to him that they don't know who it is so afterwards the lady keeps talking and then she says something nice to russell and so he overly says thank you for saying something nice here is how you talk to people and then he proceeds to compliment everyone at the table it's like good job here's how you do it he's basically setting a boundary by setting an example of what you should do not what you just fucking did the boots. <laughs> the boots are. Dude, I'm going to say, 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 they literally told him to put his foot up there and then they make a comment like, put your feet up and relax. Chat, that doesn't sound like they really want him to put his feet up. So then he kind of retracts his foot. No, I did. I, and and I like a fellow English woman. So and we do. We talked about kinky boots recently. So yes. It was fantastic. Have to go. You have to go. Okay, Russ. Um, if I'm not mistaken, Russell Brand is sober. So we're talking about when he relaxes, which is. Oh, 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 oh,
Um, it's like your desk is a puzzle. It is. I'm sorry about that. What is the solution? I think we we could put that in. So there right. you go, love. Be Must careful because that's a low cut say. dress. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, I'm only yeah. flesh and blood. I've got instincts. Oh, you're okay. full of well, dudes. Well, Tell me what you need to know. Uh, um, they thought this was their show. They really thought this was their show. And in 90 seconds, Russell said, oh, you think this is your fucking show? <laughs> I'm just going to have a drink here. Yeah, okay. Look at that assertive position. Look at this fucking position. Russell said, tell me what you need to know. When somebody's trying to knock you down like this, do not put your head Pump down. Your do not submit to it. Sit the fuck Oh, <laughs> Messiah Complex. That's the name of your tour? Yes. Do you have one? No. It's oh. mental illness. Right. And you don't have that either? I hope that I'm here as a fully qualified <laughs> professional gentleman. None of us are. Free from mental illness. That is... Okay, so what that lady does is she looks down at the I paper. So Russell Brand is on a okay. tour. It's called Messiah Complex. It's just the name of his fucking tour, bro. So this lady clearly has a preset list of questions that they plan to ask Russell. That's why she's looking at the fucking paper. And that's why the question is so jarring. That tells me the caliber of questions that they were ready to ask Russell Brand. They had no idea what type of person they were dealing with. This is a hotbed of neurosis and psychosis. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, my word, I'm grateful to be here. Yeah. But Joe's not here, so there are no messiahs. That's true. Although we actually bring more um, mental illness to the table than yeah. we admit, at least That's on this side. Here. Now the hosts sure are joking on themselves because um, he's so dominated. Tell me about the tour. You're starting in Abu Dhabi. Is that where it began? Yeah, it's in the, in a lot of Middle Sorry. Eastern nations and South Africa and all across Europe. And of course, in your wonderful country and in our country. Mm. On... <coughs> I'm sorry, hold on. You're She sounded like Abu Dhabi was like a far and distant place as if it was like another world in a Star Wars galaxy. That's what she made Abu Dhabi sound like. That's fucking weird. Some fucking weird shit. Very, very, oh, yeah, it's a really good tour. I'm talking about Malcolm X, Che Guevara, Gandhi, and Jesus Christ, and how these figures are significant culturally, culturally, and how icons are appropriated and used to designate consciousness and meaning, particularly posthumously. And what brings all those people together? They're all people that died for a cause. They're all people whose icons are used to designate meaning, perhaps not in the manner in which they intended. These three anchors very have no idea what the fuck he's talking about they have no idea what the fuck he's talking about that's fine but russell knows exactly what he's talking about because he's positioned himself as the smartest man in the room and now <laughs> everyone else around him is super uncomfortable is it just me or did they come in big stick walking tall and now they've all shut the fuck up even the blonde lady who was coming in hot at first She's like, well, we bring mental illness to the table. In fact, I think I'm the most mentally ill one. And then he even looks at her like, why did you just say that? <laughs> I kind of like that. No, that sounds know. dead serious. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's funny when you do it as a it's joke. Funny. I'm taking it seriously. I'm just trying to do it on stage. Can't we get like, you know, 30 seconds now? Well, not really, love. I mean, Gandhi, this is go. not how it works. <laughs> Gandhi, go. Gandhi, go. I hope that's yeah. not your message too, Gandhi. <laughs> and the people of India. So, what? They set boundaries. <laughs> and they laugh while they do it. It probably lightens the mood. It probably makes it easier for them to deliver the boundary. Huh. Um, it wraps it up in a nice little joke. And usually the other person gets the point without it feeling like it's hit them too hard. And well, these people are at work, are they? Yeah, they're yeah. working. They're just at work. Well, no. Work more quietly! Oh no, this man wants to... This man wants to have a terrible weekend. Only a man could be capable of such disrespect. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But I know the person blasting this music is straight up disrespectful as fuck. <sighs> okay, okay, chat. Okay, chat. Help me focus. Help me focus. Don't let me get mad. Don't let me get mad. Don't let me get mad. They're Facebooking, actually. <laughs> what are they doing? Facebooking. Yeah. They're Facebooking? Yeah. yeah. Shopping. I bet they can't look at pornography. I bet. Point. 
without it feeling like it's hit them too hard. And well, these people are at work, are they? Yeah, they're working. Yeah. They're just at work. Well, no. Work more quietly. They're Facebooking, actually. <laughs> what are they doing? They're Facebooking. Yeah. They're Facebooking. Yeah. yeah. Shopping. I bet they can't look at pornography. I bet it's blocked on the uh, website. Oh, huh? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. He goes from dominating the table to dominating to the entire they fucking world. They can tweet. They can Facebook. Yeah. They yeah. have to. That's part they're of their job. They're probably thing. tweeting right now. They're tweeting themselves mm. senseless back there. Yeah. Lovely. That's, That's to create the atmosphere of we're a hotbed of it's news. It's a walking news. <laughs> yeah. They're actually actors. They're, they're all fully <laughs> fully <laughs> Yeah. They're all just now looking for acting work. Yeah. I think that what he just did there is actually a little bit of a jab because these people were making fun of him and his work and what he does. And so then he literally kind of turns around yeah. and then makes fun of their work. He's like, what are all these people doing here? Are they even working? Does it just make you guys look like you're a hotbed of news information? <laughs> I'm going to ask a serious question. Can yeah. I try? I'll try. Try. It's never okay, good. I'll try. Go ahead. Everyone asks, what do you like better, TV, movies, or stand-up? What's actually, which one's more difficult? I mean, going on Russell's stage, on I alert, think, is probably dude. pretty He's tough. A movie can be boring because you just shoot a thing a hundred times. TV is what it is. There are uh, challenges in all of those different disciplines. The thing I enjoy most is stand-up comedy because you're direct with your audience. You can't be misinterpreted. People can't get confused. You know I'm not going to lie. That fake, those fake people behind him now are fucking me up. They're fucking me up. Aren't they fucking you up? Why the fuck are there fake people behind? It is to give the the, the appearance of like self importance. You know what happens if you work in media? People like to uh, uh, change the Central information so that it suits a particular TV. agenda. If you're in a room with people, then what it's you're saying is clear. Actors. If you say something that people that people are confused about, you can explain it to Dude, them. Then, if you so say something smart. that's a joke, people can't pretend that you're saying it seriously. So I like having direct communication. <laughs> I feel like the camera guy was like, "Pan over to the dumbest people in the room. Just pan over to them." <laughs> Because I believe people are very, very intelligent, but got, the information gets manipulated a lot, and people like to cause, like, you know, f fake stirs and stuff. You know, it's funny, the accent, you know, <laughs> when I see him in person. What Russell just did is he kind of sets a boundary in another way by indirectly talking about what they're doing but attributing it to someone else. What they're trying to do right now is ask him dumb questions. They're kind of rude and condescending and maybe kind of set something up, stir something up, get a little media thing. Russell has a lot of media training, so he knows this. But to set that boundary, he goes, no, oh, well, my show is about this, this, and this, because you guys know how it is. People like to, you know, stir things up. They like to make shit up. They like to, you know, fish for certain things. You know, people do that all the time in the media. They really do. They do it all the time. That's kind of a form of setting a boundary by calling out the behavior, but not attributing it to the person directly in front of them, but still being kind of direct that you're not playing around. But on satellite radio in the car, I can't understand a single joke you, you said. You can't understand no. it. Can you I understand can't. me? Yes, but I'm telling you, when I'm driving in the car and he's, huh. everyone's laughing in the audience of the radio, I'm like, I have no idea what I'm saying. you focus on your driving, <laughs> You're a man, you don't want to be distracted by humor. You might crash into right, a pedestrian. Okay. So it's a good thing. I think it's probably for the best. I think I'm just, my. this is my first um, brand experience. Brand, mm -hmm. yeah. I think yeah. it's not listening to him. It's ex it's experience. It's just sort of taking it all in. You are talking about me as if I'm, I'm not here. <laughs> as if I'm an extraterrestrial. <laughs> no, I'm from a country that's near to you. You're kind of a dummy. We're just sort of admiring the whole, you know, it's the whole thing. Well, oh, thank you for your I casual felt, objectification. An experience. <laughs> this woman is so nervous. Oh, my fucking God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, well, thank you for your casual felt, objectification. It's an experience. I'm glad that it is positive for it's you. It's very positive, oh. absolutely. Any, more, any other questions? <laughs> You've become nervous. Why well, are you nervous? Really? No, I'm You're a powerful woman. You've got a lovely job. What seems to be the trouble? I don't know. You've got hair like Princess Diana. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, I've never when she was alive, it to be a bit She's she was a little subject. Yes. I'm petrified of her. And oh, you her honor. Yeah. Yes. He's leaning back now. He's like, I own her. Oh my god. <laughs> How did he say that?
explain that one right so quickly. Yeah. Used to be the trouble, love. No, I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm we're now into the therapy. I'm, would you do therapy with Willie Brandt? With him? Now Willy he gets to lead you back. He's in control him? now. He's leading back now. I don't think that's where he's heading. Okay. He just gets I'm to right. watch. Yeah. You shouldn't say he when a person is present. You should refer to the person by the name. That's basically good manners. That is where Willie is yeah. heading. Who is Willie? I don't. Okay, Russell Brand. Is this what you all do for a living? Yes. Okay, but I'm here to. Okay, well, let me help you. I'm here to promote a tour called the Messiah Complex. It's here okay. for the people of America. I want the people of America to come and see me do stand up. Go to russellbrand.tv where you can uh, purchase tickets to see me. He's like, let me so do Russell your job. So Russell just said, I'm going to do, do your job, job for you. Since you're fucking since you bumbling, fucking idiots. Six minutes ago, came in here and tried. All this has transpired in six minutes. This blonde chick came in here hot, trying to roast him or do whatever, and he said, "Oh, y'all want to play, huh? Damn." These people, I'm sure, are typically very, very good at their job. What is it? You, you're conveying news to the people of America. People of America, you're, we're gonna be okay. Everything's all right. These are your trusted anchors. <laughs> Unreal. Absolutely un. Fucking real. Here's your papers. I'll shuffle them for you. Shuffle. Yeah, shuffle. Give us a now. Pen. You need a pen. Okay. Yeah, uh, pen. Coming up later. Thank you very much, Cat. Okay, we're going to be uh, talking about the uh, the talk about situation with Edward Snowden. This whistleblower is it good? What he's done for America, or, or are our secrets being jeopardised by his intentions? We're going to be talking about that. Also, Bradley Manning. Do you, is Bradley Manning an American hero, or is he compromising the safety of American troops? We care about your views here on Morning Joe. We'll be talking about those later. Here with me. Brian and Cat, Brian, nice tie. What do you think about uh, Edward Snowden? What do you think about the, the situation with Snowden? Do we, uh, he, have you got anything to hide? Should we be concerned about he, the revelations that are occurring? I don't know what's wrong with you. I understand everything he's saying. No, because you're looking at him. When you don't no. see him and you don't see them looking All right. at him. Bro. Stop saying he, I'm present. Russell. Dude, I also love how it is escalated so from Russell him. setting subtle boundaries in, in the beginning of this to about a minute ago, he straight up tells them, hey, it's very rude to say he when I'm right here. And then just now again, he gets way more direct with her and gets right in her face and says, stop saying he. This is a fantastic example of setting boundaries. It is fantastic. If you want to watch the raw video, it's Russell Brand on MSNBC. It, it's, it's really fantastic. What's wrong oh, with your manners? Oh, you're good. Be polite. Uh, I'm coming in tomorrow with a big necklace and I'm opening it up. Look beyond yeah. superficial. Yeah. That's the problem with current affairs. You, you forget about what's important. You allow the agenda to be decided by superficial information. I should go from roasting him to she looks like she want it now. Let's be real, bro. True. <laughs> she has changed her whole demeanor. <laughs> talking about don't think about what i'm wearing these things are really dumb and superficial okay don't be distracted what do you think that gesture means the way you're touching that bowl what does that indicate <laughs> what is that what's the subtext of that <laughs> we gotta go to break. you need to lose that ring mika because it don't mean nothing to you oh. <laughs> she's grasping for the shaft she's a shaft grasper oh my god that was what? free but it was worth the money we'll, that was we'll buy tickets that was Absolutely. we don't need to see the tour that i got it now i'll just the <laughs> Russell Messiah Brand. Complex. Thank you. The tour of Messiah for <laughs> Complex. Is... Don't be nervous. Starts in August in Abu Dhabi, right? You're ovulating. Oh, wait. Oh, oh, my God. God. oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Dude. Jesus. Never have I ever seen a man so confidently. Make a woman <laughs> in the video. Okay, we're gonna watch another Bose video. I'm putting that one short. This one, this one. You know, drinking a little decaf coffee and trying to quit caffeine right now. Y'all know you. I got anxiety. This, this caffeine be messing me up. I don't know who told me to drink that. Sh Anyways, uh, <laughs> I'm sitting around and. I was reading some comments where somebody was telling me that we have to watch the Chandler Halderson case updates, which we are going to do probably on stream. Maybe that's already happened. But little old me decided that I wanted to watch the Jesse Smollett sentencing, which means we're going to watch the Jesse Smollett sentencing. And it's just like, you know, flip on the camera. And um, no live stream today. It's just you and me, bozos. All right. I feel like everyone kind of already knows what happened with the Jesse Smollett situation. Yeah. Quick summary. Here's the 
crazy thing about it, I thought, the New York Times picked up this attack. Uh, Nancy Pelosi was tweeting about it. Kamala Harris was. Biden was tweeting about it. Everybody, Everybody was like was. rallying up with Everybody this dude. Was. They just made it all up. <laughs> we this were is cool. like, God, the secondhand embarrassment. I feel it in my butt. <laughs> Uh, so, look, a lot of people are going to sit here and give you the whole rundown. There's a thousand videos on it. Let's just watch this sentence. Actually, first things first. I saw a little bit of this clip, and I was like, wait, I need to watch this whole thing. So this is the clip that made me even want to watch the sentencing. I'm like, what happened here? Who are we dealing with? Who is Justice Lloyd? No, I was just like to say to your honor that I am a child. I am not suicidal. That is also right. Okay, a little bit of pride. Okay. okay. I am not suicidal. Oh. I am innocent. Oh. No, 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 no. Wait, no. <laughs> Hold on. Look, buddy, you can say I'm not suicidal, and we're going to be like, okay, maybe he's yelling at the tabloids or something like that, that, you know, he's getting mad about that. That's one thing. We could believe that. But then afterwards, he says, I am innocent. It's like, okay. I keep trying not right. to eat things, right. but yelling stuff. Now, I keep getting my attention. I'm stuck my fist in the fears of black Americans in this country for over 400 years and the fears of the LGBTQ community. Your Honor, I respect you and I uh-huh. respect the jury, but I did uh-huh. not do this. You did. I did. If anything happens to me when I go in there, I did not do it to myself. Wait. <laughs> what the? Okay, I mean. Your Honor, I respect your decision. Jail time. How long does he even have to serve? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that man just said, okay. Okay, Mr. Unche, let me inquire. Are there any post-sentencing motions you care to present right now? Yes, Judge. Yes, Ms. Will. <laughs> no, 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 Nobody knows. Just... All right, let's get to the sentencing. I've got stacks on my desk uh, that are unprecedented, and we had to wade through all of them, and it took a long time to do that. And there was a tremendous. Dude, amount... you, you know what he just said? You are wasting everyone's time. <laughs> it took a tremendous amount of time to do all of this. The subtitles are way off, boys. We're gonna turn them off. How did the person get here? Who is this person? What is the crime? You put them together. Now he's explaining to people range, why. Try to find something that is just and fits and makes sense and that is right. I'm trying to explain to you know the public why he's chosen this sentence before. If you haven't watched a lot of court cases with me before, you may not know the entire structure of this, which is basically the attorney and the defense team. They're going to come in, you know, plead their cases. The witness is going to be up on the stand. Maybe the the person they're trying to put away. A whole bunch of stuff, right? The judge is just kind of there to referee. And then at the end, he basically does a very long monologue where he tells the public everything he's been thinking this whole time in this trial. This is where we get all the tea. I mean, it's not tea. And that's what we're going to do. Let me tell you, Mr. Smart, I know that there is nothing that I will do here today that can come close to the damage you've already done to your own life. True. You've turned your life upside down. True. Misconduct and shenanigans. You've destroyed your life as you knew it. And there's nothing that any sentencing judge could do to you that can compare to the Oh, my God. Oh, my God. So who is Jesse Smollett? Oh, my God. Okay. I was not ready for that. It was like five minutes of boring shit in the beginning. And then he's just going to hit us with that. He's just going to hit us in the gut. Bro, he ain't wrong. I, I think rehabilitation is like a part of sentencing. And, I mean, does Jesse Smollett deserve jail time? He, he needs some type of punishment. But we also, as a society, should start to take humiliation as a form of punishment, honestly, because this is humiliating. It's a major punishment to be shamed by society. Being shamed by society in a big way like this will make you change faster than jail. The only thing I worry about is Jesse did this because he has a victim complex. And will this situation make him think he's even more of a victim? In this case, he's actually a victim of his own fucking actions. Sometimes early in life, people are truly, genuinely victims of their circumstances. That's the story that they told themselves. And then they live through that victim mentality. And then they start to put themselves in situations where they're a victim because that's where they're most comfortable. But you can't make yourself a victim. Out of all people in the world, did you get to be here? sitting in the courtroom in Chicago at a sentencing hearing, convicted of faking, hoaxing, 
Oh. Racial and homophobic hate crimes. How in the world did this happen? Oh. Well, there are ironies in this case. And the ironies are many and they are profound. And I'm talking about the testimony I heard under oath from Mr. Smollett, corroborated uh, in large part by the pre-sentence investigation. Mr. Smollett chose to take the witness stand, which of course is his right. He took an oath and he got on the witness stand and the first thing he did was to introduce himself to the jury. What? He wanted the jury to know who he was, where he came from, he what he was about. And I heard it on the witness stand, I heard it corroborated today by the witnesses that came and, and testified on his behalf. It's no question, Mr. Smollett was born into a mixed race family. Okay. His mom is an African American woman. His dad was a white Jewish man. Okay. They had, there were six siblings. And if you can say anything Ooh. about this family, and we're talking about a very, very tight-knit family, a, a village that, that was always uh, in sync with each other, that cared about each other, was completely, wholly supportive of each other. You know that this family knew about matters about social justice more than anything else. That's what the family stood for. It is part of the- What do you think that Jesse's thinking right now? What would you be thinking if you were in this situation? Put on your empathy caps, okay? I'm not asking for I'd empathy so for Jesse. I'm just asking you, you know, I think you're putting on a VR headset and you're going you into the Justice Mullet Simulator, okay? That's what I need you to do. I think he's thinking right now. I would be like, hey, can y'all turn these cameras off? <laughs> Please just put me back on Empire. <laughs> fabric of their existence. I know that Jussie Smollett grew up knowing to be sensitive to matters about racial discrimination, any kind of discrimination, yeah. any kind of social injustice. As a matter of fact, I'm learning more about it uh, as we're going on in the letters I've been receiving and the testimony I've heard today. He's been doing this all his life. He doesn't just talk the talk. He's walking the walk. He's out there. He's advocating. Mm -hmm. He's involved in the community. He cares deeply about social justice issues. And for you now to sit here convicted of hoaxing hate crimes, racial hate crimes, and homophobic hate crimes, the hypocrisy is just astounding. It's astounding! That's like, I mean, that, what a great word for this. I'm having a compound emotion right now. Sometimes I do this thing where I look at a literary emotion wheel. It's, it's a giant wheel of all these different emotions, okay? And I'll look at it to try to figure out what I'm feeling. <laughs> weird let's do it let's do it okay hold on <laughs> i'm not kidding i really do this sometimes maybe i'll link uh one of these yes that's exactly what it reminds me of it's like when you're a little kid and you lie and you get caught and you think nobody's gonna believe you like Nobody's gonna believe it was you, or not nobody's gonna believe you, but nobody's gonna think it was you, or like, you're never gonna get caught. No, they're just plantain chips. Like, it's so childish. And if you came with, from such a supportive, loving family, like, who the fuck does this? in the description but i just search emotion wheel okay like i do this all the time so i start in the middle and i try to figure out what i'm feeling and sometimes i have something that i call like a compound emotion because who the fuck is ever just happy you can be happy and angry at the same time because wow. you can have a lot of stuff going on i need to figure out how i'm feeling about this i'm feeling so my first one Surprise. shocked and then i would go to the next thing moved overcome amazed dude yeah there it is I was gonna say, I'm kind of amazed, and there it is. Astonished. astonished. I am astonished. I'm I am astonished. Like, I have no words. It is just so far outside of my moral realm. I cannot understand this. And like, that's, you know, that's okay. Wait, do I have any other emotions here? Stunned, still bewildered, absolutely. I am astonished, and I am shocked. Bewildered, all of the above. Something happened in this trial that, that it was remarkable and it talks about your sensitivity to uh, issues of social justice. You're on the witness stand. Uh -huh. You're being cross-examined. Okay, did he lie? Your liberty is at stake. It is your criminal trial. Mr. Webb is winding through some things on cross-examination and he's going through some social media uh, communications and whether it was Instagram or chat or, or text, a little quibbling about that, that doesn't matter. But Mr. Webb found a, a line that he wanted to confront you with. He said, didn't you say and he used a word starting with the letter N. Oh. Oh. Meet what? me at this place at this time, and I'm paraphrasing. 
And rather than just answer the question, which what is what witness is supposed to do and expected to do in what a criminal doing? trial, you stop the proceedings. June, right? You said, Mr. Webb, out of respect for all the African American people in this courtroom, oh. you should not be using that word. Oh. And I was, I was amazed. But it showed, and I'm not talking about. He did it like his. Wait, wait. The N word? Was the dude black? <laughs> was the dude who says the N word as Lucy Smollett? That's not, it's not coming up with any searches. All right, I looked it up. He was white. This is just weird. Like, yeah, don't say that. But also, answer the question. Answer the question, Justin! What I'm talking about is how sensitive you were to any kind of slight that anybody, if the wrong, mm -hmm. wrong words come out of somebody else's mouth, you're going to get up and read? speak up and complain about it oh. and, and make sure that they know that, uh, that they're not behaving the way you're supposed to behave. So oh. you know better than anybody else. How to behave. These are serious matters. They're serious Dang. to you. They're clearly serious to you and as your whole family. And for you to be here now, convicted of these hate crimes, Hate uh, crimes. It's just astonishing. Faking hate crimes. Oh, faking hate crimes. I was like, what? That's a good question. I think that's God, everybody's mind. dude, faking a hate crime. This is so embarrassing. This is so fucking embarrassing. Jesse, you were supposed to help us. <laughs> There's some conjecture you did for the money. Frankly, I do not believe that you did it for the money. Me either. You were making the evidence show. <laughs> I don't think he did it for the money. Million dollars a year when this happened. Just I don't think the money us. motivated you at all. But the only thing I can find is that you really craved the attention and you wanted to get the attention and you were so invested oh. in issues of social justice. Yo. And you knew that this was a sore spot for everybody yeah. in this country. Uh -huh. You knew this was a country that He's was banging on so his butt. Trying to heal past injustices and current injustices and trying to make a better future for each other. And it was a hard road. And you took some scabs off some healing wounds and you ripped them apart for one reason. You wanted to make yourself more famous. And for a while it worked. Okay. Everybody yep. was talking about you. The yep. lights were on you. You were actually throwing. Can you imagine everybody, politicians, the, the presidential the candidate president talking about the your heroic experience and speaking out and you sitting there knowing that it never fucking happened? What level of delusion do you have to be at to accept that attention and think that you deserve it? A national pity party for yourself. You know, why would you do such a thing? Yeah. Why would you? I, I understand you crave the attention so much, but why would you betray something like social justice yes why would you betray us jesse you betrayed us he, he betrayed black people and i acknowledge <laughs> there are wonderful sides to you they're, they're very giving and charitable and loving sides to you but you have another side of you that is profoundly arrogant and self selfish and narcissistic that's the only thing that can be concluded and that bad side of you came out during the course wow. of all these events let me talk about Judge you. calls him out on being a narcissist masquerading behind the veil of social justice. I feel like there's a lot of people like that, actually. I've been a criminal judge for many years. Mm -hmm. I've heard many victims of crimes testify in front of me. And any victim of a crime, no matter what the crime is, they are demoralized by what happens to them. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if you're injured unjustifiably, if somebody hurts you and maybe that's true you or damages you uh, in, in some fashion that's going to be uh, long-standing injuries if your property is stolen that is so true vehicles are stolen people go into your homes your prop possessions are are, are stolen uh, people do all kinds of terrible things it is a demoralizing experience yes. and sometimes it's the worst experience that anybody can can ever uh, go uh, in what the judge is saying here is so incredibly true it hurts me to realize it when someone deals with you know whether it be a sexual assault whether it be you know they're attacked somewhere like he said having property stolen or something like that these attacks they really demoralize you they shake up your sense of self-worth why did this happen to me did i deserve this some people you try to seek a sense of bigger. control of understanding why something <laughs> horrible happened to them by blaming themselves because it's the only thing that it like you feel like you can control events like these destroy your mental health and your self and your self-esteem so for jesse to you know kind of come into this like i will not back down i will be stronger i've been attacked if any of you guys have ever been a victim of any type of assault generally you know that's not really how we respond that's what we want to be
so badly, but that's not how we respond. So for him to say he was attacked like this and then show up parading around as a narcissist is very, very telling. But of course, we know this never happened. And then if it turns out that the motivation for the criminal to do something bad to you was because they hate you, they hate you because mm. of your race, because of your ethnicity, because of your gender, your sexual orientation, your religion, your age, your disability. If that was the reason for it, it is exponentially worse. There is nothing worse than to be a victim of a hate crime. It is the worst thing that can happen, especially in our country, True. in all our history, and all True. that we're going through now to try to get around some of these issues. They are physically crime, attacking you and attacking people. your entire being just because you exist. Damage. And it is painful. Crimes. There are people that are actual, genuine victims of hate crimes that you did damage to. These are people that are, have a difficult time coming forward. They may be mistrustful. They may not yeah. want to bring it to the attention of the community. He's seen real time. victims before. There Thank you, be James. Trepidation. That's the judge's name. His name is James. Thank you, James. God bless and goddamn. I don't know how this is going to impact other people, if they're going to be hesitant to come forward because they're going to think that they're going to be accused of acting like you and, and doing a stunt like you pulled here. Exactly. I don't know if first responders are going to be more doubtful and skeptical of people that come forward. Yeah, he's going through the damage that, that this, little, uh, I'm this little prank that caused. Now I'll show one of the ironies in this case, and I find this pretty profound. I got letters from people that advocate about victims of hate crime their entire lives. They devote their lives to this. I'm talking in particular, Derek Johnson, president of the NAACP, Reverend the Jesse bit, Jackson, yeah. The hair. An icon here in Chicago. No, no introductions necessary. They devote their whole lives to addressing issues about social injustice and hate crimes, and they are here today asking me to show you mercy. And I Man. take that seriously. I find it profound. I take it seriously. Wow. And I know that they're in a better position than myself to educate the public about that topic, about the damage D you've done. Damn, you know, James is telling it, bro. He's telling it. Y'all, do we like James? I think we like James. You know, he ain't coming in with that big punch. You know, Julie's still got my heart, but I like James. He's telling it. All the attention that you've got garnered here on this case, that they are going to seize the opportunity. They will educate the public, and they'll be talking about this. Uh -huh. and they'll try to mitigate some of the damage that you've caused to real victims of hate crimes, and uh -huh. they're in a better position to do it than I am. And I will defer. He's spitting. You see that? I will that you have done some real damage. Go, <laughs> James. Go. Let me talk about your premeditation. Again, I've been a criminal judge for many years. And I know that people end up where you are right now, awaiting sentencing on their criminal trial. And how did they get to court? How did that happen? There's some people that wake up in the morning. They have no there. intention of doing anything wrong. They're, they're not looking to do anything criminal. But it's <laughs> <also last time. laughs> but there that is the biggest call out so far. Dude, this judge is straight spitting. Like, stop that. I didn't even think about it. He's like, him. every day millions of people wake up not intending to commit a crime. But you, Jesse, on this day, woke up with the intention to commit a crime. He did. I mean, the way that he's freight, you know? And it's yeah. like, because Jesse's sitting here thinking, this isn't a crime. This needs to be done. I need to raise awareness uh -huh. of what's happening in the country. And I need to position myself as the ultimate victim. <laughs> I think, I, it's a crime. This is a crime. If you need help identifying if your wants and needs are criminal, ask anybody. And if you're afraid to say what you're going to do, it's probably a crime. <laughs> Road rage, a barroom fight, bumping into somebody. Words are exchanged that uh, somebody finds insulting. And sometimes weapons are available. And the results can be horrific. And they can be permanent. And people are sitting here and they're, they're wondering themselves, how did I get here? I, I wasn't looking for trouble. But trouble just seemed to find them. And crimes and insults. And when I'm saying that I have to put the person and the crime together and try to mix them and understand uh, who it is that committed this crime uh, within I think we understand system. exactly who Jesse is. I consider how the person got here. So but this is not a crime of impulse. There are also crimes of opportunity. Oh, I mean, I'm just literally churning. Walking down the street and churning somebody owns something. They left uh, uh, the keys in the car with the motor running. And they take the car. Or they're in the department store and they see someone 
put the credit like card on this weight. side, and they put my uh, muscles. Adjust their baggage on the other side, and grab the credit card. Those are crimes of opportunity. They didn't wake up thinking they're going to commit a crime, but something just uh, looked at, looked too tempting to them. They use very bad judgment, and then they get in trouble. They get caught, and here they are. But then there are crimes of premeditation, Mr. Smollett. That's what you are all about here. Crime of premeditation. You did wake up in the morning thinking you were going to do something bad and something wrong. Does anyone else sing when they're nervous? Well, woke up okay, today. It wasn't singing. Choosing just, violence. Just a couple of notes. Just to get the attention. <laughs> and I know more today about this than I ever did before. That there are some wonderful things about you, oh. and I know how people. They cherish you, and they cherish your relationships, and, and they cherish the good works that you've done. Oh, and they love you the sincerely and deeply. Like and this. they're not faking. They're not lying when they talk to me about uh, their feelings about you and the good things that you've done. But you have that dark side, and this is what happened here. You premeditated this case uh, to an extreme that, that is that's amazing. Sure. <laughs> you wrote a script. The script involved words. You're going to encounter me on the street, yell out empire. N word, F word. You're gonna hit me. You're gonna beat me up. Oh my! Bleach on me. You're gonna put a noose around my neck. That's a script that you wrote. Now it's not a good script. Especially <laughs> for uh, street or bill in Chicago, it's questionable. But it's a script that you wrote. You picked out the actors. You chose the Ocean Darrow brothers. And why did you do that? He directed. Because you knew them. You tried Wait, them. there's a video of this? You're kidding me. I just looked this up, guys. When the police came to Jesse's house, he was still wearing the noose that they had put around him. I ask you this. If you were the victim of a racial Why attack would you leave the rope and somebody put a noose around you, would you keep that on your body? I would take it off immediately. Including body cam video of Smollett with that noose around There he is with the noose on until the cops show up. Unreal. Jesse? You're an established actor in a serious television uh, production of Empire. They were kind of hangers on there. They're trying to get jobs as extras, maybe a little speaking part here There's and there. No power but they, you were mentoring yeah. them. You were helping them. They wanted your advice. They, they would do anything for you. They thought you were you, you were one of the greatest people in the world mm -hmm. to know and that you could help them in their careers. They're in great shape. They gave you a little advice about uh, diet and exercise, but they idolized you and they would have done anything for you. And you chose them because you knew <coughs> that you could trust them, that they were loyal to you. You paid in advance by check. Dude. <laughs> Not necessarily a good idea, but it was your idea. He really idea. thought he was going to get away with plan. this. I mean, he staged the whole attack. He paid the guys, and we knew him. You paid them in advance, and the, and the check was out. Hygiene. Hygiene. Hygiene for Also, out there, also. the check was shown into evidence. That was part of your premeditation. How much you, you pay them? Date. You chose a time. You chose a location. Embarrassing. You had props prepared. You gave them a hundred dollar bill and had them get the, the supplies. What are the supplies in this case? Get masks. Oh my should see God. You. We're, gonna, we're gonna say that you're white, uh, but you're, obviously the Ocean Darrow brothers are, are not white. We're going to cover your faces in masks. We're going to have a red hat because that's going to indicate MAGA country. He paid them $3,500. Wow. We're going to get a rope that wow. we're going to use as a noose. We're going to procure some bleach. We're going to have the supplies. And then he had all this Dude. together. And he did rehearsals. You picked him up and you did drive-bys. You drove around and around the block. You picked him up in Lakeview in their neighborhood. And some distance away, you went to Streeterville where you were living. And you showed them, you're going here, you're going there, and you're going over the lines. You're going over the script with them. So they... And the fact that this motherfucker still says, I did not do this. I had no part in this. 
he just can't actually like face his own actions. The the actual lack of awareness is. It scary. would memorize the script. You're indicating which brother. You're you're the one that. I don't think it's lack of awareness. It's like he's so ashamed of his behavior that like he just. This was planned. This was premeditated. <laughs> premeditated is the extreme, and I find that your extreme premeditation in this case is an aggravating factor to me. Yeah. Man. Let's talk about the incident itself. Dude. Awesome. Shindero Brothers are Crazy on board. Is, I think he's out of jail already. Your plane is running late. Uh, you had a chance right then and there to think, okay, I'm really late. I'm four hours late. This can't go down. It's freezing in Chicago. We're on yeah, yeah I should have to second guess it. You might have <laughs> just thought about it and said, you know, maybe it's not in the cards. Maybe maybe the karma is wrong. I shouldn't be doing this. But no, no, no. You double down. You start communicating with the brothers through social media. Now, whether it was by texts or chats or Instagram, public or private, one way or another, you kept in touch with them. And, and there was some quibbling about the, the specifics about how you kept in touch with them, but they knew what time you were coming in. And now the time is pushed back to two o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. in the freezing cold weather. It's double digits below zero at two o'clock. He's out here pushing back his planned assault like it was a meeting. You have to have a reason to be out on the street. And the reason you chose is the meeting is at 2 a.m. <laughs> come up with the story <laughs> that you needed to, to get some eggs at Walgreens at 2 o'clock in the morning. Oh. And if not that, you're going to go to Subway and get a sandwich and a salad and, and get something to eat at 2 o'clock in the morning in the freezing cold. From Subway. One more thing. You got the Oshindero brothers. Now, they're, they're on board with you. You're using them as your patsies. You have... Your friend, you get your friend Brandon on the phone and abrasion and scrape. I can't. This Maybe I'm a piece of shit for that, but whatever. <laughs> he sees that that noose is around your neck, but it's not the way that you walked into the house. Now the noose is up at your throat. You've maneuvered Ooh. it. Noose, and you've made it look worse than it was. And he left it on. This That's is part of your plan. Wow. Officer Bay gets a simple question. What happened? And then you start to lie. And you haven't stopped lying ever since. You've been lying and lying and lying about this case, and that's why you're here today. You want to fake the incident on the street, try to get some attention at work, <laughs> try to have somebody else feel sorry for you. That would never have got you here. This is kind the of problem was you lied. To guys, for me, for some reason, this is kind of hard to listen to. I don't know if anyone else feels that way, but can you like write in the comment why do you, if you feel like it's hard to listen to, why do you feel that way? Because I can't really put my finger on it right now. I guess just the secondhand embarrassment, it's a cringe. maybe embarrassment is too close to anxiety for me, and I'm just like uncomfortable. I'm like astonished. <laughs> like, how did this happen? And you caused all kinds of consternation. You caused a major investigation to take place which got many people involved and caused great stress throughout the, the city, nightmare. Actual uh, throughout nightmare. the entire community here. And that's he the problem. That's why you're here now. Those were the crimes you're convicted of. Not the shenanigans out there, but the lying about it, making it up. And that's why we're here now. We repeated you guys at the hospital. Six counts were put together. The jury found you guilty of five of them. One was a little bit different than the others. And I understand that. Let me say, from my vantage point, and I was obviously here at every stage of, of this trial, I thought the uh, jury's verdict was uh, accurate, correct, mm -hmm. uh, wholly corroborated. But what could only Accurately be correct and wholly corroborated. For lying. That's the crime you're here for. Lying <laughs> to the police. Yes. Well, Officer Bay took this very seriously. He said, that's a horrible thing that happened. And he started the process of... of a police investigation, and the detectives do? got involved, you ended up at the hospital. All things Dude, were, this is the other crazy part of it. Everything that the judge is saying is just facts. These are all of the facts, period. At the end of the case, like, you cannot refute that any of this happened. I don't care what your intent was or what you were trying to prove. This is embarrassing and you lied. Go to jail. Take a little time out. Have a seat. Have a drink. Have some water and some saltines. Jesse. This word got out. And you're not just any person. Jesse Papini. You were uh, known in some circles as a, a very competent uh, actor, uh, a really good actor in a very serious uh, television production called Empire. And people knew about this. And because you're a celebrity and because you've been so active in all these social justice causes, and this is what is so, is so uh, 
unbelievable about this case that you of all people are, are here convicted of hoaxing hate crimes. You who know better, who are out there in the world trying to be uh, something for the good uh, in social justice causes that you ended up here right now like this. It's crazy, but but you know people in high places, elected public officials, so they reacted. Weird. You knew mainstream journalists, they reacted. You became the first page, your, your front page news. You're talked about in, in the halls of Congress. People are th talking about making laws to prevent what happened to you to happen to anybody else. People on, on mainstream media Should we put on are away? decrying what happened. What kind of country is this? How could they do this to Jesse? I, we know Jesse. He's such a gentle guy. He's the guy that was described to me well, by all the, the family Friday, and yes. friends that I heard from today. And I believe that Jesse exists. But you use them as your patsies too. They were giving you the national pity party you wanted. Oh. They're putting you on the front page. Maybe all the attention year. is on you. Okay. People talk about social injustice. Your name was coming up first, which is exactly what you wanted. But, but you used them, if anything, People in, in those positions, elected public officials, mainstream journalists, their credibility is everything to them. And you didn't care that you might be damaging it. You did damage to them because, again, there's a side of you that has this arrogance and selfishness and narcissism that, that's just yeah. disgraceful. Yeah. And your plan worked, of course, until it didn't. Oh. In Chicago. Your plan worked the course until it didn't. Oh. You lived here for five years working on the, uh, on the Empire show. And you have to know, as well as anybody that lives in Chicago, the Chicagoans, they love their city. They're fiercely loyal to the city. And believe me, Chicagoans know we don't all agree with each other uh, on a lot. There are all kinds of disagreements on what our city should be, what the vision should be for the future. There's even disagreements about what our past was like. But despite all the disagreements and all the things that are not right with Chicago, it's sweet home, sweet home to Chicago, to the Chicagoans. Chicagoans are fiercely loyal to their city. But Chicagoans have one thing oh in common. Oh my God, you got me No Peyton. misunderstandings. You got me, Peyton. Wow. Nobody has actually tried to get me today with an April Fool's joke. So you got me. You actually got me. <laughs> Everybody's on the same page. Okay. Every and that page April is crime is a problem. It is a major problem. <laughs> Nobody disagrees. And we know it. Nobody tried me all day today, actually. No they one. They're valuable. They're True. Detective resources. True. Are all right. Look, I need y'all to picture this for a second, okay? You come home and your place has been ransacked. They took everything, even the fucking mini fridge that you had laying around from college eight years ago. You call up the police, you give them all the info, and you realize you got a picture of the guy on your ring doorbell, okay? You got a picture of this motherfucker. And then you hit up the cops, and they, they just kind of give you the runaround. Yeah, we're working on it. Yeah, we're working on it. And then nothing happens. You know why that is? It's because they don't have the resources for it. But they had all hands on deck on Justin's case here. And it was all a lie. Wasting these resources is truly yes. something that affects people, especially in a high like crime area like Chicago. What you did because you were selfishly, yes, arrogantly, narcissistically, bringing attention to yourself. It's the only reason you could have been doing such a crazy thing that you did mm -hmm. was you took away mm -hmm. a lot of resources from other places, <laughs> from other real victims of real crimes. You used up the police uh, resources for your own Benefit. Wow. Uh, and that's a big problem here. What you did is you created what we call around here Not a heater. Not true, because I'm What's a heater? a heater is a case oh. that when it's reported to the public, the public conscience is shocked. Hey, Johnny, you're my shocked favorite. to such an, uh, uh -huh. an extreme that the public is demanding that the police solve this crime here, right now. Yeah, right okay. Right now. A Everybody heater. Has to take second place. We're going to use that term, Bozo. A heater. A heater. We got us a heater. A heater. And boy, did okay. they put on an investigation. Yo, Sherry Papini, that was a heater. I've been listening to Chicago police officers and listening about police investigations for many years. It's certainly not a perfect police department. Uh, it's perhaps unfairly maligned in some uh, respects uh, as well. I'll match uh, the homicide detectives here against any in the country for uh, their competence and thoroughness. Uh, not a question about that. But what they did in this case is extraordinary. I have never seen, even in some murder cases, the amount of police work that went into this investigation. You did exactly 
what you didn't want to happen. You put, they put so many police resources into this. When I say what you didn't want to happen is you never wanted this case solved. You thought that somehow you'd be able to skate by and nobody would ever know what really happened here. And you're gonna walk away from this and it didn't go down like that at all, of course. Mm. So they solved the case. And what happened? Turns out that you're not a victim of a hate crime. You're not a victim of a racial hate crime. You're not a victim of a homophobic hate crime. You're just a charlatan pretending to be a victim of a hate crime. Charlatan! And that's a fraud! Especially from the family you got brought up with, with your family values. <laughs> it's so sad. You're a charlatan. The damage you've done to yourself is way beyond anything else that can happen to you. He right. said, I, he said, it looks like I got power, but really, you've already done all the work. <laughs> you are now a permanently convicted felon. <laughs> Your family who loves you and supports you. I only want to use the word forgive because, because forgiveness isn't even necessary. They're with you so much. You're so tight-knit, but you have to live with the fact that you really put them through a ringer. For no you embarrassed reason. your valuable friends in uh, high places, the elected public officials, uh, people in the media. You embarrassed uh, them. You have to live with that. I don't know if those relationships relationships can uh, be repaired. No, no. Toxic in your own workplace. Dude, if you were friends with the Jesse, would you forgive him for this? You become toxic in your own workplace. Your career uh, future is uncertain at very best. It was really on a rocket ship uh, to success. And yeah. You've turned yourself into riches to rags, oh. and it's so unfortunate. Your very name has become an adverb for lying. Oh my! And I cannot imagine what could be worse than that. Oh. People talk about uh, situations where somebody's uh, lying and trying to manipulate, and, and your name comes up. It's, oh, pulling a Jussie, something like that. That's awful. You're the butt of jokes. The butt of Man. jokes. Mainstream talk show hosts, they make jokes about you. They do skets, uh, sketches about you. I, I can't imagine anything worse than that. Now, this is all self-inflicted. These are things you did to yourself. Yes. This is self-damage. I don't think he even believes that it was self-inflicted. Self I, I think he still believes the victim. That what you did is funny. And that's, there's some room for humor or jokes about it. But I assure you, this court does not. Damn. I don't think there is anything funny at all about hate, uh, hoaxing and faking racial hate crimes. Hoaxing or faking homophobic hate crimes. I think that is disgraceful. There is nothing funny about it. There's no humor in what you did whatsoever. All because you're selfish, arrogant, narcissistic. At least you have that side in you uh, that, that came out through this case and, and you kept doubling down and doubling down and doubling down. Uh, it's not funny. It's not funny at all. And I'm your sentencing judge. And I don't find it funny. So let, where are we at? We're at the end. You're convicted of a class four felony. Oh, it's oh, presumptively oh. probationable, but we have some real serious aggravating factors here. Your premeditation, which I've described. The pain you've caused to real victims of hate crimes, which I've described. The damage you've done to the city of Chicago, I've heard. It's been, it's been talked about. I'm mindful of the city's request for restitution and I, I, if I'm going to fashion that, uh, consider that request, I have to fashion the sentence accordingly. And above all, the capper of all cappers, your performance on the witness stand. This could only be described as pure perjury. You got on the witness stand. I'm calling it like it is. Calling it like it is. You, like it, like it is. you committed hour upon hour upon hour of pure perjury. And I, Dude, I, and, and if we were not in a court of law right now, why did I say that? Like, I work in the legal system. But anyway, if we were not in a court of law right now, y'all, tell me, Jesse would not be the type, he would be 100% be the type of person to argue with you after you just called him out for lying on the stand for hours. He would find a way to make it about him. He would find a way to lie his way out of it. But because we are in a court of law, he can't speak right now. His time is up. We've already heard him. And unfortunately, I, I don't know, maybe he should have chosen better words because I don't remember anything the motherfucker said the whole time. You will pay restitution to the city of Chicago in the amount of $120,106. You are fined. How he going to find that money? Maximum fine. And you will spend <laughs> the first 150 days of your sentence in the Cook County Jail. And that oh, will start today, right here, right now. And he's about to get taken. Mr. Smollett.
Oh, hello? What? I feel like I did. I, I feel like his face was just reacting then. Well, anyway, you know, spoiler alert. I just read an article a minute ago that said that he got taken out of jail already. But I mean, exactly. cases, I gotta be honest. That was humiliating as a motherfucker. And wait, you know wait, what? If wait, I was we him, didn't get, we didn't I get would, the, um, I don't know, skip suicide. town, cry about it. Uh, we can't skip town. I guess we can skip town. I don't Do you have any questions? No, I would just like to say to your honor that I I'm not suicidal. That's what I was about to say. Okay. I am not suicidal. Okay. I am not suicidal. I am innocent and I am not suicidal. If I did this, then it means that I stuck my fist in the fears of black Americans in this country for over 400 years and the fears of the LGBT community. Your Honor, I respect you and I respect the jury, but I did not do this. And I am not suicidal. And if anything happens to me when I go in there, I did not do it to myself. And you must all know that. I respect you, Your Honor. I respect your decision. Jail time. I am not suicidal. Okay. Mr. Uche, let me inquire. Are there any post-sentencing motions you care to present right now? Yes, Judge. <laughs> yes, Mr. The defense would wish to present a motion to reconsider sentence. All right. And file it in standard. <laughs> Man, it's such a fucking fool. <coughs> Hold on. <coughs> He's such a fool. That was a good laugh. That was a good laugh. Ooh. Ooh. <coughs> <coughs> While I catch my breath, let me go. Close the <coughs> Close the windows because it's getting dark out. Oh my god. My goodness. Oh my god. Live GTA. Oof. Oof. There's so many videos. So many videos to watch. Oh my god. Actually, guys, I think I'm gonna put a wig on. Cat acne? Cats have acne. Hold on. Why don't I start with my stuff? Like this one. <laughs> So we get excited for every project we do on our YouTube channel, but this one is kind of off the charts for me. But I have a few things prepared around here that Caitlin can't see yet because I'm going to surprise her with it. So I'll get her, walk her in kind of like hiding her eyes, and then we'll get started. <laughs> it's recording. Oh. So don't fart. <laughs> oh, trying my best. <laughs> you know, I can just look down. No, just put stuff on the ground. Oh. <laughs> okay, now you're good. You're safe. So our cat, Juby, loves being pushed around in a box. Yes, that is the face she makes when she's happy, or it could also be the smug satisfaction that her humans are doing manual labor for her enjoyment. 
But either way, she liked it. She will never tire of this. We can push her around forever and she's always satisfied. But sometimes we need a break. So we thought we'd make a remote controlled cat car. Is it a cat car, a cat bed, a box remote? on wheels? <laughs> We don't know yet. We yeah. haven't built it. <laughs> now, Caitlin has been in charge of the design side. She has some great inspiration images. She has a lot of things in her head. And it's been my duty to, like, figure out the thing, the, the chassis for which she will be carried upon. And I've had so much fun. Can I, was, I've had can so I like, much pause fun. for a second? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We had a freight delivery this yeah. morning. And, like, what did, you, what did you buy that needed to arrive on a pallet? <laughs> So we're going to be building the top out of these corrugated cardboard sheets. Okay. And we also have these little, like, look at these. These are for, like, the headlights of the I, car. I feel like you're kind of skipping uh, ahead of things. What arrived on the pallet today? I feel like you're avoiding us. I'm going to be sharing this with Caitlin at the same time I'm sharing it with you guys. So. <laughs> okay, so imagine, imagine, like, what would you picture at the very beginning? What, what, what would we use? An RC car. An RC car. Yeah. Kind of like this, right? Yeah. Maybe a little bigger. Yeah. yeah. Now, the problem with something like this <laughs> is okay, oftentimes so there's no adjustability the of the speed. Look at this. This is, is not the best. Full forward, but what do we think? What full do we backwards. think? And we don't want to spook her. Yeah. Like, look at that turn. That's like, that's super jarring. Yeah. And now, this is, this is a fun toy. I'm just going to have a lot of fun with this <laughs> and enjoy cute. it. But this like doesn't work well for a base because Joob is 11 pounds. Yeah. She's a heavy kitty. As a demonstration, here's a five pound weight. Half of the <laughs> tube. Yeah. Okay. I'm already shedding so much. It's honestly doing better than think? I thought. Do you want so, another weight yeah. to equal a full tube? Yes. <laughs> okay, you got it. Good. <laughs> oh, geez. Maybe more tape? Yeah. I feel like, you know, in the Grinch when he puts the horn on Max's head and he just sits down. Max's <laughs> <laughs> car right now. Okay, ready? Oh. That's it. I'm trying to turn it. Yeah. Ideally, we would be getting kind of more of a robot than an RC car that, like, is a little bit more of a platform. Okay. We're makers. I'm an engineer. I started looking into it. We can build it. We can buy all the components to build it. Or, or. Should I film you or should I not look? <laughs> Don't look. I'll, I'll film you, but I won't look. Oh! I hear something. Is it a drone? What is, no. Are you gonna roll over on a Segway? No, 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 no. Oh! <laughs> Sorry! <laughs> What was that? Or, you didn't buy this. Like, what? What is this? This is very hardcore looking. This is our base. Look at how smooth this is, Caitlin. Oh, really? that's very slow and quiet. Look at oh, that. that's Juby approved right there, I bet. Look at that. You can barely hear it. And it's honestly a pretty so good size for her. Slow. T-slot aluminum framing, modularity, design. This is a lot more. Like, look but at these wheels. So is she going off the road? I was thinking, like, Caitlin, let's build the cardboard. Let's build the, the cardboard one. But then, what if in the future, if she likes it and she's used to it, what if we build an enclosed one and we go for walks with her? We could take her outside. We could like imagine like going for a walk. We're over here walking and like what are like we're controlling the dirt. We could go for like an extended walk. Oh, I'm so excited. 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 Oh, I'm so we got a little seat for Jube. We're gonna build the car kind of around this. And look at this. Oh, that fits perfect. Oh. You can, you can, so you can see bit. how this is gonna come together. Oh my god. Adorable. Look at that this is, throne. Yeah, I was gonna say this is a remote control cat throne. That's As is about. right and proper. I am excited to build the top. Now, I'm curious to see if she's gonna like this. This is 12 and a half pounds right here. Just yeah. Okay, okay. They can handle it. So, my job is done here. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'm looking forward to see what you build in the rest of the video. See you guys. <laughs> Help. <laughs> <laughs> I, um... <laughs>
you have. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to drive it? Yeah, 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 you do. Yeah. Go full speed. <laughs> ooh, ooh. The turn's pretty agile. Yeah, right? I just imagine like a single cat parade yeah. going down our hallway at yeah. this speed. And Juvie just looking so pleased with herself. I hope this works. I can't really do car designs well, oh, so like my first instinct was just going into a space like theme with cloud details and some stars. It was pretty cute, but it seemed kind of delicate for the huge tires, so I tried to make the next design a little more car-like. I added some details like taillights cute. and some cute fins with dude space on them, though I did keep the starry base. But before we can start working on these side panels, we need to make a wooden base to attach it all to. So I love Kaylin's design. I'm really excited about it. Now we need to make it work in real life. How are we gonna attach it? How are we gonna cut it? One thing we realized, there's, there's not wiggle room for our laser cut material to fit in between there. Yeah, so we're already kind of having to modify the design. My thought is I'll like make a centerpiece mm -hmm. that attaches right here. And then on the inside, I'll attach more laser cut pieces to the, the centerpiece. So that they're not actually having to go between the base and the tire, they're just yeah, resting on top. Kind of like that. So let's get laser cutting on our Goa Forge. You know, there are ways of seducing a cat, food mostly, toys. from the fully assembled pieces and all of a sudden, wow, it's painted. But um, we hit a little bit. <laughs> yeah, we hit a little bit of a snag and we've kind of gone down a rabbit hole on paint. We wanted to try this really cool color shift spray paint and the first attempt was bad. We're using draft board because that's what we have the most of. It just has a texture that the color shift paint emphasized. But after much testing, we realize just just do a metallic acrylic paint that looks really nice Good and enough. makes it look kind of fancy. Yeah. Okay, so now we'll do the cool transition. Okay. <laughs> So I designed a custom vanity license plate for Juvie's car that Evan's gonna cut out for me. Look at the little Tobies! Better. Cam forever. <laughs> the beams! Ah! I saved the beams. This looks perfect for the license plate. When I bought it, it says that it's made for laser cutting, so let's see if it works. Alrighty, so all my pieces are nicely cut out. I want to do like a little transition -y thing, you know. All my pieces are nicely cut out. Look at that, I didn't even lose a toe bean. I'm just over here scrolling Twitter peacefully. I did not expect the shade. <laughs> Anyways, we just need to assemble them. Oh, wait, I should remove it. <laughs> here it is. Oh, yeah, that's so right? adorable. That's is adorable. amazing. That is it cute? I like your zoom because we don't have a zoom on this camera. You just pay for effort. Pay for effort, you know? Yeah, that's not acceptable. So I wanted to add these little headlights to the car, but I wanted more personality. So I made these little yeah. sleeves to turn them into eyes. Look at this. They're like googly eyes. Oh, my gosh. What do we do? Do we, like... You know, you look like silly, more straight on, crazy and goofy. Oh, yeah? Yes? I kind of like it. I kind of like it. <laughs> <laughs> look at our boy. Or is it our girl? Oh, look at our Ooh, creation. You're a star. You're a star. Oh, you know how I have to get. Wait, oh, like, is it over? 
Ah. Oh, they're great. Ah. Hey. I love their channel. Yay! <laughs> they put such detail. They're so detail oriented. They get better and better. They I love their resin. I'll watch a, an, another one after. Watch. <laughs> Turn a little bit. What about just doing like? No, these time marks immediately. Oh fuck! It's fine. She can just go straight, I guess. What happened? <laughs> Defeated by the choice of tires. But oh I don't God. like. I, I'm surprised by how much I like how this looks. And it's awesome. No, it it's just a little dainty. Yes. Yeah. Is that part of the charm? Yes. Yeah. I just hope. The Juby will accept it. Yeah. I'm not even hoping for love. Just will she accept it? It might take a bit. Sometimes foreshadowing is relatively obvious. <laughs> to give us the best chance, why don't we get some extra from the picture with? Mm, okay. Hi, Hello Fresh. Since y'all are sponsoring this video, would y'all mind if we add another 20 pounds of ham to this week's order? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yes. They said no. But they can offer 16 free meals and three surprise gifts to anyone who goes to HelloFresh.com and uses code Evan and Caitlin 16. We're HelloFresh customers for a lot of reasons, oh but gosh. first and foremost, because the food is really, really good. The produce goes from the farm to you in under a week, meaning it's always fresh. People and they offer so many five-star recipes that we always get to try. Like the step-by-step -step recipes are super easy to follow, and they save us time they so we can go out them. and enjoy the spring weather. So if your goal is to be more healthy, HelloFresh has veggie, pescatarian, and fit and wholesome meals. If your goal is to add a dessert, you can do that too. Plus, they're the first carbon neutral meal kit company and almost all of the packaging is recyclable. Go to HelloFresh.com and use code EVANINCAITLIN16 for up to 16 free meals and three surprise gifts. Oh my god, oh my god like an animal. Okay? <laughs> Uh-oh. Introducing. I'll pick it up so it doesn't scratch the floor. Thank you. <laughs> no tire marks. <laughs> there it is. Okay, should I go get her? Yeah, let's go get her. Okay, here, you take oh, this. I'm like nervous. I need to take my jacket off. I know, I'm a little nervous. I don't want a t shirt and catnip. Yeah. I already did it. Oh, you already catnipped yeah, it? Yeah, I, I did the, the dry catnip. Well, you know, we, we gotta like lean things in our favor just a little bit. I'll try to bribe her with some treats. Yeah. 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 Hello? Yeah, do bag, it's time to show. Yeah, he's for you. Yeah, Juby. I have ham. She's so distracted. Don't you have ham? Who are you? Who are you? She's what like are you having to do it? She knows we're up to something. Yeah, she doesn't trust us. Yeah. Oh, 
Oh, she's coming. Oh, she's coming. Oh, she's coming. Oh, she's coming. She's coming. She's happy. She's got those little claws going. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Are you, are you a needy girl? Properly in her throat. Oh, oh yeah. Success. Do we move it? Do we, do we go it? for it? Because the risk is if she's not comfortable yeah. enough with it, and I move it preemptively, then she could get spooked. I mean, it's pretty slow. We can, should we try? Let's just, let's just do it like forwards and backwards. Okay. She oh, my God. She's so <laughs> oh. Immediately sorry, suspicious. I'm sorry, Julie. I didn't know how to do that. <laughs> Do not trust. No, no, down, no, down, no. No. I mean, she might, she might like it moving. She like, she's like. <laughs> Please like and subscribe, Judy. <laughs> like and subscribe to our, the cat bed we made you. Look at how safe and nice and controlled that is. Wow. Operated by yours truly. A safe and controlled boy. I still want to do a chaos right now, but do I do not. I also don't. Don't traumatize her. <laughs> oh, bad. I did not Don't. Don't do, do that. <laughs> Lots of rhyming. <laughs> She's like, fuck that. That shit. Oh, interest. Disinterest. <laughs> All of this is probably going by for you guys so fast. I think it's been an hour for us. <laughs> this is too cute. So distressful. Don't you love it? Oh, what's he gonna give me? What's he gonna give me? What's he gonna give me? <laughs> is this is us getting distracted with Judy now. This just turned into Judy playtime. Yeah. I'm no longer in trust. I'm going to turn this off. Yes! Hi, yes. Hi nerds. Thank you for enjoying our creation. <laughs> what do you think about this? Should I leave? Maybe I should leave. <laughs> Let's just let her nap there. No, 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 no. She's no. so excited about it. I ruined it. <laughs> shame, shame. <laughs> I can tell that she's suspicious. I know. She's suspicious of us. We are, though. <laughs> that, uh -huh. that was effective. Put the bag up there. <laughs> Cheating. Cheating. Positive reinforcement. <laughs> Drugs. Yes. Alright, let's just let her rest there and we'll we'll check in again later. They can't get her to be okay. comfy with it. So moving we yet. move Juby's bed into the office because this is where we are most of the time. And there's a nice sunspot. She's been here since like 8 30. It's like <laughs> two right now. I think the next step should she maybe just it. like move it ourselves, kind of like we would with her boxes, mm -hmm. and see if she's cool with it. Yeah. Why don't you just do that right now? Just just give it a push from the front. Push it backwards. Okay. Hi. Y'all do what do you like? Do you like? Is that fun? So far, so good. She's just kind of looking at it. Until you look fabulous. She doesn't seem to yeah. mind, honestly. Like, right. it's mild, how to mild cat, amusement, honestly. maybe? <laughs> All right, let's just do this for the next couple days. And uh, <laughs> get her used to it, and then we'll we'll turn on the motor. I was just thinking, like, she seems really cool with it. Should we just move it now? <laughs> I mean, we could, but, like, it, it does the jump when it turns on. We need to turn it on when she's not in there. Oh, yeah. And then coax her in. All right, Juby, Juby's cute and everything, but let's see. Let's, let's watch some fucking resin. Let's watch some fucking resin. Let me see. Let me do this. Let me decide which is one of their most coolest ones. Let's see it, see it, see it, see it, see it, see it. Do you 
work hard? Maybe too hard? Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> Good thing this video is sponsored by Old Spice. It's time to freshen up. But, but why is there only Caitlin's products around? What about my products? Men have skin too, you know? Old Spice Fresher Collection. Finally, men have a selection of products with real ingredients and benefits that we deserve. Oh. This is the kind of thing that makes my skin feel like a freshly plucked peach, but a manly one. Is that vanilla and amber with a hint of berry? <sighs> Caitlin, today we're going to be playing with resin again. Yeah, we're going to be doing a beach themed resin pour inspired by the beachy scents of the Old Spice Special Collection. So, in the end, we're going to be doing it over like a live edge slab and it's going to go across our bathtub so that we can hold fancy things while we're bathing. Like fancy people? Like fancy people. <laughs> but we have learned a lesson from past projects where we just jump right into the final piece. We should we probably. Suck. Time. We don't suck. We get better the second time. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to be doing some test pieces first. Alrighty, so we looked at a bunch of tutorials and they all do different things. So we <laughs> each decided to take the stuff that we thought would work best and try that. So the consistent things between the two of us are the colors we're going to be using for the blue and green so we're mixing those up right now but i'm going to start with a white base which is white acrylic now i'm just going to do like the straight wood and the white is to hopefully like hide any of the texture underneath and let the color show through properly yeah so we'll see if it makes a difference the other difference is for the white of our waves i'm going to be doing alcohol ink evan's going to be doing flow acrylic flow acrylic well no not not flow acrylic oh yeah let me tape over the loop. Yeah, okay, okay, yeah. Slow acrylic. Yeah, so we'll just, uh, we'll just see. <laughs> we'll just see. I guess since you're starting with the light one, I'll yeah. start with the, the dark one. So we each have to be conscious of not using too much. Yeah. <laughs> like, don't use more than half. Oh my gosh, you know, one thing I forget before every single resin video. What? We, need, we should probably level level our creation. Okay. I already see that it's like sliding this way. <laughs> okay, so in the tutorials we watched, they did a lot of mixing by hand. Like just using your fingers you and stuff. Like... And I think it gets some, some good, interesting results. <laughs> Isn't, she... Isn't that what she did? She did like a pitter-patter? I don't know. I'm doing like kind of like waves going forward. We oh, watched... no. Are you doing stream? Yeah, what's up? Oh we no, yeah, no, they, they need to go sideways. That's the way, way w waves work. Aww. I think that already I'm seeing that. Where's my protein shake? Why are we so moody? Oh, no, it'll go away eventually. Uh, well, I can tell you why, but you're on stream. I know, I know. I know the reason, I know the reason. You want another reason? I did something dumb. Oh no, what'd you do? Okay, well, I don't want to say it on stream. Why? We're holding you accountable. No, 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 no. What happened? No, mute the stream, mute the stream. I'll get off, I'll get off, I'll come back. 